Hi, today we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll begin looking at verses 1 through 11. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you are pagans, you are enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discernment of spirits. To another variations of kinds of tongues. For another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who are lost to each one individually, just as the Spirit does. And may the Lord bless the reading of His Holy Word today. Today we're looking at diversity in union. Indeed, the unity of believers in the church is essential. We all come from different backgrounds. We all bring different abilities unto God's work. In Romans 12, 5, it tells us, So we being many are one body in Christ, everyone members of another. As followers of Christ, we need to be united not only to win others for Christ, to support our church, to serve Jesus, but also to serve humankind. We need to be active in our faith in a united fashion. And I'm thankful for so many of you that are so active in your faith in a variety of ways. Just as the Spirit says, we have a variety of gifts that we are diverse and we can use that diversity to uplift the Lord, to praise His holy name, to win others for Christ. As Paul writes to Corinth, Corinth was a very sinful place during this time. Today we might call Las Vegas the sin city. That is pretty much what Corinth was. It was a sinful city. It was difficult for people to maintain purity in a place like that. They are truly a cutthroat people. They are out for their own, and their ways spread to neighboring towns. And so Paul wrote to them. Paul wrote to them to try to encourage them to change those ways and to walk closer to God, to live a life truly in Christ. This chapter in 1 Corinthians reminds us of how important each part is to the body. It's important that we realize that each one in our church is important. That each one brings something valuable unto God's work and unto his kingdom. We're challenged to use whatever talents, whatever gifts, whatever skill set we have in unity to help one another and to build God's kingdom. We must unite and overcome polarization. Our world is so polarized and we see that very much in our country. And sometimes we see that in our churches as we are having many difficult conversations in all denominations of the churches. We've got to realize how important it is to stay united in our service to God. We need to use our abilities to help others, to lift others up, to encourage one another. Just think about yourself. 
Think about the abilities you have. Now let's take some of those away for just a little bit in an imaginary scene. Think about trying to walk down the road but having your legs banded together so tightly that each time you try to take a step you fall on the ground. Very difficult, isn't it? Or try eating your meal with your arms tied behind your back. Very difficult again. But if we can untie those arms, if we can unbend those legs and let every part work together, we find that things go so much better, so much more smoothly. Today, that's the way it should be in our church, to quit tying our legs together, our arms together, and let us use the skills, let us use the gifts that God has blessed us with. Are you doing that today? Are you using those skills and are you encouraging others to use those skills? Well, in our text today, we're challenged to agree on what matters. We need to agree on the mission of our church and ultimately the mission of our church is to go you therefore into the world and baptize people, to bring others to Christ, to help others to get saved. Too often we put up roadblocks to creating unity in a church. We put up roadblocks to bringing others into God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians in our text today in the 10th verse tells us, Let there be no divisions among you, but be you perfectly joined together in the same mind and judgment. We need to be getting along. We need to be getting along in our churches because why would somebody want to be a part of our church if we're not getting along? Of course they're not going to want to. We need to strive to cooperate with one another and to get the most out of the gifts that we each have to offer unto God. Ephesians 4.3 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Yes, we come from different backgrounds. We are going to have some different thoughts. But we need to keep the unity of the spirits in the bond of peace. We need to learn to respect each other, to honor each other, and to love each other. We need to work together as a team. Paul was seeing that problem in Corinth, that they weren't working together as a team. They were thinking one was better than the other. Well, we're all important in God's work. We're all important in this world today. And we need to encourage one another. All good teams need cohesiveness to become great at what we're called to do. Think about any championship team. Whether it's a debate team. Whether it's an athletic team. Whatever it happens to be. They need that cohesiveness in order to be successful. When we serve God, we, try, we should try to be seamless in reaching our mission. We'll see greater success in our church if we work cohesively. In 1 Peter 3, 8, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love his brethren, be understanding, and be courteous. And next, besides agreeing on what matters, getting along, having teamwork, we also need to realize others have talents too. Sometimes we just think we've got to do it all. But we're surrounded by a host of people who have great talent. I've been very blessed as a pastor and as a school administrator to be surrounded by people with great talent. In both of the school districts, I've been blessed to be appointed as the superintendent. I've been very fortunate to have wonderful folks working all around me. Whatever position you name, 
I've been very blessed because of the people around. They had great talents and they had great love for what they were doing. And I see the same thing in the churches I've been blessed to serve. That the folks have some tremendous talents and they love God and they love God's people with all of their hearts. But yet many times we see that sometimes people try to do everything by themselves instead of working together. Instead of working in their own confines, sometimes we cross over and try to do the work of others. Working with others just makes things better, doesn't it? When I worked in a pottery, one of my jobs was that of being a slip maker. Slip, it's kind of like the liquid clay that gets pumped throughout the pottery. I'd be in the back of the pottery working all by myself, nobody else around. And as I was around, it was my job to make that slip, that liquid clay that would go throughout the pottery. Shuffling that dry, heavy clay all evening long. Mixing in a batcher and eventually again pumping it throughout the entire pottery. I didn't make the wear, but somebody else did. Somebody else finished the wear. Someone else glazed it. And that whole process just went all the way through, each one doing their part. I didn't try to leave the back of the pottery to go out and do those jobs because my job was to make that liquid slip. And as each one in a pottery did their job, great products followed. And that's the way it should be in our church that as each of us does our job, great things will come of it. And lastly, we need to be thankful for others. That as we consider the gifts of others, that we're thankful for that. And as we're thankful for that, it brings unity to the church. It helps us, indeed, to share in the diversity of each one, to build up the church. All the roles to encompass the church are quite significant. Sometimes you just got to spend a little while with someone else to see how important their role is. Sometimes you might gloss over it, but if you tag along for a while, do a job shadow, you'll find out that they do more than what you really realized that is being going, going on. I know I am very blessed with all the people who work behind the scenes at the churches I serve. Because they make sure everything happens. That everything falls into place. We as a body of believers need to make sure we're doing that all the time. We love each other, don't we? And as we love each other, we're thankful for one another. We realize that others have talents, they have gifts, they have abilities. And we'll work together more as a team as we love one another. And we'll learn that, to get along and to truly agree on what matters. Today, I pray that you'll be a part of God's team, that you'll get along and that you'll honor one another's diversity because in diversity, we can become united. Thank you for being with me today. And may God's grace, love, hope, and peace always be with you. Amen.